data, data, data. What? We now have the data. Data. What are you talking about? For years, the inhabitants of the Tesla world have been trying to ascertain with certainty whether or not supercharging degrades their car's batteries. Many have anecdotes and premonitions, but there's been no certainty, no hard answers. Until now, now we have the data. Data. What data? So a new report from Recurrent shows data from over 12 1,500 Teslas to see what the effects of supercharging versus non-supercharging has on battery degradation. Check this out. This chart here shows the data from 6,300 Model 3s. The y-axis is the percentage of range and the x-axis is battery days. So the dark blue line is frequent fast charging and the light blue is rare fast charging. So see, they're basically the same. No difference in frequent supercharging. They're the same. I remember way back in 2016 when we got the Model X, everyone was talking about like, ooh, if you supercharge a lot, yeah, only your, supercharge your battery, once a week. Your battery right. is going to be, you're going to have less range. Right. You're telling me that that's not true? Well, here's another chart. Uh, this is from 4400 Tesla Model Ys. Same thing. No real difference between frequent fast charging and rare fast charging. Or as Recurrent stated, we compared cars that fast charge at least 90% of the time to cars that fast charge less than 10% of the time. In other words, people who almost exclusively fast charge their car and people who very rarely fast charge. The results show no statistically significant difference in range degradation between Teslas that fast charge more than 90% of the time and those that fast charge less than 10% of the time. Thank you, Mr. Data. So, I mean, this is huge news for like lots of people because I think yeah. a lot of people were scared yeah and they were like oh I should I shouldn't supercharge well and I'll I think just... this is because so many other brands don't take care of their batteries as well when they DC fast charge and so their batteries do get hurt mm. and so they thought well of course this must apply to Tesla Tesla's so good at cooling their batteries that it doesn't seem to affect them and I mean when we've been testing out some of these other EVs it'll go like you know 200 kilowatts all the way up until 80 percent state of charge and then it'll drop right mm -hmm. off and it's like that's that's stupid right that was right. just written by us and it'll be uh, <laughs> it, until 80 percent and then it will drop um that's not the way it should be it should be you should be figuring out exactly like a bunch of parameters temperatures uh, all sorts of stuff i think this is a really good point tesla had years to figure this out they had supercharging years before the competitors so they could kind of learn from the snx and cook <laughs> Lots of batteries. Well, but I have a 2015 Model X, like one of the first off the line. Sure. And my degradation curve looks the same. Right. And I supercharged a lot. I think that it's it's tough because I don't think that a lot of people understand like degradation. Like when you like pull up your phone and it's like two years old, you know that it doesn't last that long, but it doesn't tell you. Right. In your car, you get in your car and you go, you like swipe the thing all the way to the right. And it's like you have less range. Right. And I think a lot of people go like, oh, my gosh. What? But that's going to be normal for anything that's battery powered. And it's true of uh, gas cars as well, because they get less efficient as stuff starts to wear out. And what's kind of cool is the new LFP batteries lets you charge up to full without really having any effect on degradation. Yeah. Um, but I mean, this chart is just super exciting. Yeah.